Hey guys, um, getting my co-host here to join in a minute. All right, Jen is about to come on and we start our show. Hey, Jen. Uh, check, check, check. I'm here. Can you hear me? All right, let me just turn it up. You can hear me okay, right? Yes. All right, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so welcome to our pod recap sessions. And uh, today we are here. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of. We missed out the, the last two, the last topic a while ago because there were a lot of things happening. I think it was Halloween, right? That uh, was supposed. <laughs> hey, Mark. Um, Mark. And, and hey, you're Y R R E J B. Okay, hi. Um, so. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're doing a pod recap session, and this is on uh, something we did about domestic violence. And this was uh, with um, Denise Moore. Um, do you know what episode it was? Yes. It was uh, episode 182. Episode 182. All right. So we'll go with episode 182. Now, we were talking about um, the domestic violence. Now, what we do in our recap sessions, guys, uh, we come out here and we talk about three things that came out um, to us that we feel were important in this particular session and we want to kind of talk about it and um, kind of highlight it so if you are interested in wanting or you're interested in going back to the episode well this is probably your trailer to assist you in saying hey this might be a good uh, one to go or watch or listen to um, but all of them are great I just want to say that. Uh, hey, we're a good team, right, Jen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So starting us off, uh, I think the first thing that um, we want to talk about are the warning signs on domestic violence. And I think uh, Denise really talked about this when she said uh, those signs, you really, you really can tell because some of the signs will be odd. But the only problem is that... Um, it's kind of hard to tell in some instances, right? And she also had experienced the same thing and could not could not figure it out. But then people had to tell her. And at that point, she was like, hmm, okay, this does look a bit different. Okay. Um, the ones who like over, overcompensating with you, like they want to be with you all the time. Um, I think another one was they want to always be to know exactly where you are. You know, you don't have your own space to be able to hang out. So and isolation from your family and friends, you know, that goes along with the, you don't need anybody else except for me um, in the controlling behavior. So. Having like, like that polarizing effect on yep. you. Uh -huh. uh, yep, 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 yeah. So that's what, uh, that's what she had said um, was one of the, the warning signs. And I think what what also was on that is that, like I said in the beginning, you really cannot tell the red flags. They are really hard to 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 kind of gauge unless you are really really focused on it. So most of us are at the point where you know we want a relationship to work. However, we do have to be careful, especially ladies. Well, it's all both ladies and and and. Uh, and uh, gentlemen, okay. that you have to be careful who you who you hang around with and who you you wanna you wanna stay with because that does affect uh, affect you in the long run, especially when it comes to choosing a partner. And some of us, you know, at that point when um, we get to, a, I think it's fatigue. Maybe it's fatigue. Um, you know, when you get to your 35, they tell you, oh, you got to get married. You got to try this. You got, you know, it's time. And then you feel like you are under pressure and being put under pressure. Some of these red flags might just pass you on. 
Um, another thing is maybe you're younger. You may not be able to figure that out and you're still trying to figure out your life and you don't know how these things come around. And that's kind of where you get caught up. I think for me, it's the, the many instances, right? That can make you get into it. Okay. Yeah. It, it's not one specific one. Mm. So it could be younger, inexperienced, older, your pressure from outside telling you, hey, you got to get married. It's about time. Then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to throw the, let, let, let this one come through. Oh, Reggie has joined in. Uh, keep it keeps growing. Uh, welcome to the to our recap session. Hey, Reggie. Yeah. yeah. And so the other thing was uh, what and how to help overcome uh, domestic violence. Now this is where we had an interesting conversation. I think uh, where I was like, how about that, that forceful way of trying to help somebody? You know, you you know, understand that there's an issue happening, but you have to let it play out on its own. Let the person get ready. And when they're ready to move on, they'll move on at their right time. It's not you to be the one to help them move on. So all you can do is stand by them and help them navigate that, uh, that transition in their life. Uh, and then hopefully they get out of it um, in a sane manner. But it does take a toll on you. Uh, what did you think about that? So I would add, that you definitely want to you know be supportive and be a friend and even though they may choose we, we talked about this with our uh counselor mm -hmm. who joined us the denise d moore um who we really appreciated uh being with us on this particular episode uh 182 that you know try not to judge and still be a friend they may decide to stay in the relationship but they'll still need you know friendship and support you know they may need to talk or they may need to step away sometimes and you want to offer that to them and be a friend you know some people say oh if you're still with him i'm done with you you know and that doesn't you know that's not serving your friend you know to just be that way with him um if you're going to be a friend, be a friend and be supportive and respect their decision to leave when they're ready. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I think that's important to share. Right. Respect the decision is the one thing because rushing them through it, it will not help you in any way. And I think there's a, there's a movie, The Maid. Uh, that is a very good movie that people should want to watch. It's, it's a net, Netflix uh it goes to show you how people get into it's, well it's not dom domestic violence but it shows you how people get into it has a little bit of it but um it goes into into how somebody can go into depression but just based on the fact that you are just around issues of that happening to you who could be even historical and um i just uh one other thing there are also different facets of violence you know there's that uh financial emotional and then there's physical right those three so we, we have to also pay that in mind when it comes to such things um or when you look at uh, domestic violence and you look at your friend it may not just be one it could be different you know with the especially with the it cannot be physical most people actually think of physical but it is that emotional part that is really uh one to watch because usually I think it precedes sometimes either way, but either one precedes the other, but usually it's the emotional one that starts proceeding. Like you said, only me, I start alienating you from the other people. They don't love you. I'm the one who loves you more. So it's more like that part. And then they call you names. I remember she said one of those things that you get called names and then you're like, oh, oh no, this, something's wrong. And um, after that, then I think it gets worse. Yeah. And I I was going to share that uh, it's a complete manipulation of your feelings and, you know, making it seem like, well, you don't really, you know, care about me and love me and kind of like turning the tables on you type of thing to make. And, you know, as we uh, referred to this behavior as gaslighting, gaslighting, you know, making you feel like something's wrong with you and that you are the problem and you cause the situation you cause this dissension in the relationship and things like that so um yeah i think it was a, a, important to recognize um these behaviors you know when you really think about it there are warning signs when the you know starting to get a little more aggressive and you know just 
mannerisms and things like that and controlling behavior and the isolation um, practices, which can be really subtle. And one other thing is that, you know, you may think that um, someone who commits domestic violence is this scary, big, bad wolf type of person. But no, they are a likable person. They have friends, family. They may be in a high power pos position in their job. And, you know, and, and, and people would never know that behind closed doors or behind the table, they are this type of person, you know. Yeah, and th those, those are the ones that uh, when something happens like that, you're like, man, I did not believe he was such a person. Well, mm -hmm. you probably saw the signs. It's just that you you may just uh, have fluffed them as, oh, you know what? This is just somebody just misbehaving or, you know, um, not wanting to look at it as it is, you know, uh, with that. Uh, Jen, they, there's one thing that we always do. Uh, we always give the hotline number and the access number for the for anyone who is out there who may be listening right now that could be under domestic violence uh, or may feel that they are being abused and they have a number that they can call. Do you have that number on the text? Oh, yes. Let's get that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's important to have that available. And it has, it's in many languages. It's not just in one. Um, they have many languages that they can, uh, they can have it. Okay. So that, uh, um, the hotline, I guess this is the long hotline number, is 1-800-799-7233, but there is an abbreviated... Like you can text, right? Correct. Let me find... Uh... And um, one of the things that people really should know is when you call that line and you feel that it's something that's going to be really dangerous, I think you call and request for pizza. You say, I want to... That is correct. That is correct. We talked about that. Yeah. So that already tells the, whoever, is in the, um, whoever is in the law enforcement uh, will kind of come help you out. And something happened in Texas, a couple of... A couple of uh, yeah, recently. Yeah. Some, somebody called and then they said they're ordering pizza and hung up and... Uh, Soon after that, the police came and help, found her that she had been uh, abducted. Okay, here it is. So you can text 88788, and then the number again is 1-800-799-SAFE, which is the 7233. But 88788, you can text. Oh, great, great. And uh, hoping that that will help somebody okay. who's out there who may be experiencing that issue. Um. Then we looked at the resources um, that will, will the, um, the resources to help you kind of overcome this issue. And um, one of the most interesting things was that uh, there are no shelters for men. Remember that, mm -hmm. that, that that was one of the big things and I was really amazed. And I did do some research and it's true, they don't have any. Uh, what they'll do is you probably have to go to a homeless shelter mm -hmm. if you're a man or, and unfortunately guys, worst case scenario is, Hey, you got to put up with it because I mean, and then this is in the scenario that a man is experiencing right. abuse needs to right. leave the scenario. Right. We just set that. That up. Okay. <laughs> just, yeah. Oh. Because when men and women can experience, you know, abuse and may need to leave. And like we talked about, sometimes, you know, for the safety of your, yourself or your children, you may have to leave with just what you have on your back and may not be have a chance to properly pack and things like that. Um, you know, ideally, if you can make a plan to leave safely, that is what is desired. But if it's a matter of safety and um, care, you know, you may just need to exit as soon as you can so right and one of those things yeah you just take off and go um you know it could be in the middle of the night but I, I, was this uh, there was a conversation about how you can sometimes you'd have to make a plan to leave because mm -hmm. you may make a plan to leave but it may not work mm -hmm. but you have to be ready to leave at your time you know when you decide hey I got to go. I got to go. And when you're ready, you have the plan, you have your clothes ready and you just take off. Or like you said, you may not need a plan. You may just have to go and just keep moving. Uh, but this, the thing that I was like saying, uh, for us men, 
it was it's really one of those situations where i gotta feel sorry for myself especially um you know you really feel sorry for the men who want to get out of these situations but they can't because of uh the options that they have um and going by what what happens here you're looking at this situation where we talk about us men you know we take care of ourselves and we need help and you know the way we stand for ourselves we have a hard time you know uh getting help in such a situation mm -hmm. but you know uh it is what it is but let's hope in the near future you know things will change and we may start having at least one or two centers that may be able to help men uh with regard to the situation because truly um you know uh tables could turn and it could be hurtful for some men out there who are experiencing such an issue um so there are resources out there that people can go for um what did we find about those resources in terms of the for care right and so um there are uh shelters and safe houses for women and children to go to you know you would want to do a search of your local area to see where those are located um but there are, because I know, like, even in my area, there are, you know, women's safe houses and things like that um, for women and children, teen mothers, and things like that. So, um, let's see. And actually, the hotline.org mm -hmm. is a good resource, and you can find some agencies on that site as well the hotline.org right and then we also have to encourage uh one uh, one of the thing is to encourage people to actually seek out resources mm -hmm. whenever you feel something you may think it is you know just kind of start looking at uh at these issues and say hey you know what maybe it is it may not be but kind of find out because it's hard once and i think once uh, a family member goes through it or somebody like a friend they'll need a lot of support a lot of support you know right. you have to be there for them um you have to give them grace you cannot try to you know uh make it to make them feel like they were inadequate or something was wrong with them with the and that's the reason why they got into that situation anybody could have gotten into that situation right. so we have to look at it in a, in a different manner to whereby it's like okay it happened but i'm here for you we're friends and that's why we're here for you today definitely all right and see something say something and do something so if you see something that's happening to your friend say something about it and then if you say something you know and then do something like tell them uh, you know kind of find out the resources for them and tell them hey you know what this is what i think is happening but if you can't you know well we're, we're here just know i'm here for you right I agree. But it's tough out there. It is. It is. It really is. So. Overall, how did you like the show? Um, in terms of it being the month, uh, the domestic violence month. That's the month of October, right? It was. And we got mm -hmm. in there right at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And it is uh domestic violence is observed in october every year um, for significant reasons to raise awareness to support victims advocate for change and to honor survivors you know um, sadly you know we have to remember that many people don't make it out alive so this is a really serious matter um and it's a it can be a matter of you know life and death um, in some extreme cases so if you can you know curb that and get to safety in the beginning of a potential um you know unsafe situation it would be to your benefit for sure so all right try and help out and do your part and uh, yeah 
but just don't make make sure you don't get violent with the person because that does not help the situation at that time because remember i also added i was also talking about hey why don't we forcefully remove um this uh, person out of this situation like say for example y'all girls gang up and say hey look we're gonna go up in this place and we're gonna get this guy and we're gonna teach him a lesson and we're gonna get this girl out of there and we're gonna move and at that point if she's not ready she's not gonna leave and you are actually creating more of a problem than assistance mm -hmm. and it could also end violently right to, so yeah some things you just have to which is really hard but you just have to go by it and uh yeah and it's possible to make a plan on um, the hotline.org has a section about creating a safety plan mm -hmm. so you may have to just strategically plan you know and, and assist your friend if they are experiencing this and it may not be something they hastily do if they are not in a rapidly you know unsafe situation where they can and they feel like they have the time mm -hmm. to make the plan mm -hmm. you know support them in that mm -hmm. okay yeah. Right? yeah yeah so yeah it's a tough world all right well I enjoyed the show. Uh, there were times and moments that uh, were off. I knew I had to ask some difficult questions uh, on that part, but um, I think overall um, it was a great show and I encourage people to go listen to it. Um, I think this is like the second time she's been there talking about domestic violence because I remember the last, you did talk about it early in the year. We did. We did talk about it, but it was kind of touched on it. We kind of touched on it and kind of expounded on what we had had the previous um the previous time that she's there on the show okay great all right so with that jen i'll say um uh, it was great to hang out and uh, we'll do this again uh next time as we go to our next uh, pod session um uh, well the next one that we have will be recapping something else but uh okay. Our recap sessions guys uh just join us whenever we are doing a recap session you can ask questions if you have any anything to say uh, this is more interactive and like i said this is a trailer to our podcast uh conversation that we had with denise moore episode number 182 182 all right so you can join you can join us there and go take a a peek at uh, what it's all about oh, well, by accident in accident podcast <laughs> yep yeah, and some other podcasts so it's a whole you can listen to the whole show listen listen and watch the whole show there all right till next time peace thank you now i got to figure out how to end this thing there we go.